But what exactly are these virtues like justice and courage? So, so Aristotle just got through telling us um, that uh, you need to acquire these virtues. But what are they? Well, in his view, uh, he says that they are means between extremes. So for every virtue, there's going to be a vice. Now, a vice is simply the opposite of a virtue. So um, if you have the virtue of honesty, um, lying is a vice. So we call something vicious, you simply mean that that thing has a vice. Now, we don't use it English, if we don't use that word in English that way anymore, we usually mean by vicious um, a particular kind of vice, namely being overly aggressive or um, inflicting harm. So you call a dog vicious when it bites you. Uh, but vicious just generally means having a vice. So for every virtue, there's going to be a vice of deficiency and a vice of excess. Or in other words, there's going to be something which is too much of the thing in question and something which isn't enough of the thing in question. And Aristotle says, well, the virtuous state is somewhere in between those two extremes. And the Latin sort of phrase for that, which was very popular in the Middle Ages, was virtus in medio stat. And what that means is virtue stands in the middle. That would have been a very nice way of phrasing this. The average Greek person would have thought that was very nice, very interesting, and would have been very congenial to them. Now, what does this mean? Well, here we have our uh, way of pictorially representing that. So we have, on the one hand, a vice of excess. On the other hand, over there, we have uh, the vice of deficiency. And the virtue is going to be standing in the middle. So let's take an example of this. So here's our scale here again. Let's do, for instance, um, the, uh, the virtue of courage. Now, what do you call someone who's deficient with respect to courage? What do you call that person a coward? So the vice of deficiency in this case is going to be cowardice. Um, now, we don't really have a word in English for the uh, opposite problem. Um, Aristotle coins a term, and typically uh, we translate that uh, as something like foolhardiness. So basically you could say here, look, the foolhardy person is the person who runs into the danger no matter how great it is. Um, the coward is the person who runs away from the danger no matter how small it is. And the courageous person is somewhere right in the middle of that. All right, let's do another example. Justice, for instance. Uh, what, when you, um, justice, you can gloss uh, basically as giving a person what they deserve. So uh, uh, someone with the vice of deficiency is going to give a person less than they deserve. So for instance, in this class, if you earned an A and I give you a C, then I'm being unjust because I've given you less than you deserve. Now, of course, on the other hand, you get the very same thing with the vice of uh, excess. So not only am I being unjust if I give you less than you deserve, but I'm also being unjust if I give you more than you deserve. So if you earn a C and I give you an A, I'm also being unjust. So there's two ways to lack courage. There's two ways to lack justice. Um, it depends uh, uh, and there's not, excuse me, there's not just one way to be uncourageous, right? You could be uncourageous in the foolhardy way. You could be uncourageous in the cowardice way. You could be unjust in the giving more than they deserve way. And you could be unjust in the giving less than they deserve way. Now, these means, Aristotle says, are relative to the person and the situation. What does he mean by that? Um, well, what he's trying to get at here is this isn't a mathematical mean. It depends on the actual situation that the person finds themselves in. So let's take an analogy. Aristotle himself uses a similar analogy. Suppose you were wondering how much protein you should eat. Well, it's going to depend on you and the kind of life that you live. So they had a skit about this on Saturday Night Live not too long ago, if you watched that show. So they had uh, the swimmer on there, uh, Phelps. And they were making the joke, eat a diet like Phelps. He's a champion, so he must eat healthily. Um, they said, what kind of diet do you eat in the morning? Well, 12 pancakes, 14 eggs, 5 pounds of toast, um, milk, juice, orange. Uh, well, all of this food. Why? Because he's a world-class athlete who's training day in and day out. He's bulking up on protein. He needs that energy. So he eats a lot more protein than the average person would. Well, a per person like me who d doesn't train that way, ate like that, I would become obese. Um, so it wouldn't be healthy for me to eat the way that Phelps does. 
Um, and it wouldn't be healthy for him to eat the way that I do. Because what's healthy for me um, depends on the kind of person that I am and the situations that I find myself in. So that's what Aristotle says when he says it's a mean relative to the person. But notice this is not relativism. What he thinks is that in any particular, given the person and the situation that they find themselves in, there's always one answer to what the right thing to do is. Where does the mean fall in this particular case? But it's up to the individual to determine that in the situation that they find themselves in. Every situation is different. Every person is different. And so Aristotle concludes there's nothing like a general rule which you can memorize which will tell you in every given instance which things you should do and which things you shouldn't do. Rather, what you needed to do is develop a skill, this practical ability, to determine where on this sliding scale your uh, position will fall. So let's take a look at this, um, illustrate this with some examples. So we'll use courage, since that's fairly straightforward. Now, imagine that there is this uh, um, um, burning building. Okay? Now imagine there are two people. So, on the one hand, we have our friendly firefighter guy here. He's in his uniform. He's dressed for this. And on the other hand, you have me over there. Um, there I am at Junior's enjoying some nice cheesecake. Now, suppose that he and this fireman and I were confronted with this burning building. Well, what ought we to do? Let's think about the fireman um, first. So... If the fireman's confronted with this situation, what's going to be courageous is going to look more to the outside person like something that's foolhardy. Since, since this person has the proper training, he has the proper equipment, um, he's going to have to, uh, to be courageous. He's going to have to run into this burning building, um, risking his own life. So it's not as though running into danger or risking your own life is always foolhardy. It depends on the kind of training. Now, for me, in the same situation, uh, to run into the building by myself unaided would be foolhardy because I don't have the proper training, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm going to die of smoke inhalation and have to be saved myself. Okay, so now, instead of talking about the fireman, let's talk about me. Well, something that's going to be virtuous for me is might look more like cowardice to an outside observer since it's not going to be virtuous for me to go running into the fire. What's going to be virtuous for me, perhaps, is to go get help, um, to call uh, someone like our firefighting gentleman friend over here. That's going to be the thing that's virtuous for me. So here you have two people in the same-ish situation, and they each have different actions which are virtuous for them. But each one of those things is something that's determined in the situation by facts about the situation that are unique to it. So there's an objective answer here. This isn't relativism. Um, but the only person who can determine the answer is the individual who finds themselves in that kind of situation. And that leads us right to the key concept in Aristotelian philosophy, the concept of phronesis. So the virtuous person, then, is the one that's able to judge where this mean falls for them in the situation that they find themselves in. So there's not going to be a rule that's going to tell you what you should do. You've got to develop this practical skill of determining for yourself where the mean is for you. And that's, um, in, in English, you would translate the word phronesis as practical wisdom. And you only acquire this through repetitive practice um, and all the other things, which we said, which requires a lot of mistakes. <laughs>